European-wide counterterrorism dragnet all the time. So it can well have been the case that they said it's going to be today instead of six weeks from now or two months from now. So, so Paul, why Belgium? Why do it in Belgium? Why not do it someplace else? Well, uh, that's where the cell was based. I mean, this network is, is a Belgian Brussels-based uh, network. Uh, they created a logistical support structure uh, there. Um, Mohamed uh, Belkade, who was uh, one of the coordinators of the Paris attacks, as Michael was saying, was killed in that raid on that, uh, the, their hiding place where Sally Abdeslam was hiding uh, on uh, Tuesday last week. Uh, but uh, there are also a, a number of other um, senior members of the conspiracy still at large, including Najim Lashrawi, uh, who uh, also went to Syria, I believe, to have connected uh, with ISIS there and who in, uh, was coordinating the, the Paris attacks um, in real time from uh, Belgium during the attacks, giving orders to, to Abdel Hamid Abaoud and the uh, Paris uh, uh, attack team. Uh, now, his um, DNA uh, was found uh, at the bomb factory uh, where they uh, constructed the TATP suicide vest for the Paris attacks, suggesting that he may have been the bomb maker behind the Paris attacks. Uh, somebody may be able to make these kind of suicide vests, and uh, if that is the case, it's possible that he was... Uh, the guy that perhaps built the devices uh, for these attacks. They're still trying to figure out who the bomb maker was. Okay, just one last question. So Belgian authorities knew all of this, right? Right? They, they knew a cell was probably operating within their country, and I know hindsight's twenty twenty. So why couldn't they stop a, a large-scale attack like this in Belgium? It's a small country. Um, you have, as Peter Bergen and others have been pointing out, these communities within the capital that are essentially um, ghettoized, you know, uh, areas where radical preachers and you know self-radicalized uh, jihadis are, you know, rife. It's very difficult, often, to turn people into informants because. Please I tell me he's not, not dead. Intimidated and harassed people into mm -hmm. silence and submission. So the gathering of humans. Please tell me they're not dead. Very slow, grueling process. Just injured. There's another aspect to this, though, that I want to mention. After the Paris massacre, Dabik, which is the propaganda. Those people that are on the floor. Put out essentially a uh, uh, you know a eulogies for all of their attackers, but for. Abdel Salam, the guy who got away, the guy who didn't detonate his suicide belt either because it didn't work or he might have chickened out of the operation. What they were trying to telegraph to the world was, these were our boys, we trained them, we knew about this operation well in advance, meaning the Shura Council, the chief decision-making body of the ISIS HQ, was well aware that the attack was underway in Paris, and we are, we are among you, we, are, we live in your communities, we are there already. I hope this doesn't happen here. Places. We're already there, we're planning these operations. And that, the video that came along with that, uh, with that Davik magazine, or actually preceded it by a few days, ended with a, uh, a bullseye or a, a, a rifle scope superimposed on David Cameron's face, suggesting that the next target was going to be London. So, so along those lines, I mean, was this, was this attack meant to symbolize a bigger attack, an attack, uh, uh, you know, an attack on the heart of Europe, in other words? The metro station targeted is right underneath the European institutions, the European institutions, uh, the European Parliament, European Commission. Uh, so this was a, a, a very symbolic attack uh, against uh, those institutions and also the international airport and international uh, target. Belgium is involved in the anti ISIS coalition is launching strikes against ISIS in Iraq. Uh, ISIS has repeatedly threatened Belgium uh, with attacks. Uh, there's been a drumbeat of, uh, of terror plots and terror attacks uh, in Belgium over the last couple of years. Let's not forget that uh, in May of 2014, a ISIS gunman killed four people at a Jewish museum uh, in Brussels. There was a major gun and bomb plot thwarted in January 2015. There was that high-speed train uh, where there was this uh, gunman linked to ISIS uh, who was going to try and launch a, an a, a attack with a Kalashnikov. Three Americans saved the day. Uh, and there have been this, this steady drumbeat of, of plots uh, in uh, Belgium. When the police went in uh, on Tuesday last week, about exactly this time uh, last week, to Abdul Salam's hiding place, uh, they found an ISIS flag, a Kalashnikov, detonating explosive, ammunition, all suggesting that there was an active plot uh, in the works. The working assumption is uh, this was the same group behind the Paris attack, Abdeslam's group, that carried out uh, this attack. Did they accelerate their plans in some kind of way uh, because Abdeslam was captured? They feared he might talk, he might give information up which would thwart the plot, perhaps. Uh, but
that is the working assumption right now. Right, I have to leave it there, Paul Crookshank, Michael Weiss, thank you very much. And by the way, um, as you know, President Obama is in Cuba. He was meant to give um, a speech later today about Cuban relations. We know that uh, we know that the subject matter of his speech has changed. President Obama will be talking on these attacks in Brussels, in Cuba. We expect that to happen around 10:20 Eastern time. We'll keep you posted. I'll be right back. Make a statement with style.